Welcome back to Cider From Scratch. I'm David and Rachel's behind the camera. Today we thought we'd change up our cider making experience and kind of give you guys a complete walkthrough on how to make a simple, easy, really good batch of cider. A couple of things you need, obviously your apple juice. We have found in experience that you really want to get a 100% juice not from concentrate. It's a little bit more expensive, but in the end it's worth it. It tastes really, really good. So that's what we have here is Martinelli's 100% juice not from concentrate. We got five one gallon jugs of that. Then you'll need your yeast. Today we're using a ale yeast. You could also use a wine yeast, up to you. Uh, we've had really good experience with Nottingham Ale Yeast, so we're gonna use that today. And then optionally, you can use some yeast nutrient. We have some Go Firm to get that yeast a good head start before it you know, enters the juice and has that fermentation. As far as tools of the trade, you'll need your fermentation vessel. Today we have a five gallon carboy, a funnel for dumping in your juice and your yeast. Um, if you wanna take measurements, as a lot of people usually do, you got our hydrometer, so we'll show you how to use that. Um, an airlock, super easy, a couple of spoons, etc., etc. Before we get started, we want to make sure that we sanitize everything. So we will cut to that sanitation now. Now that we've got everything sanitized, we want to prepare our yeast mixture. All you need to do is follow the directions, but essentially this is dehydrated yeast and we need to add it to water to rehydrate it and get it activated. So we're gonna take our 11 grams here. This yeast needs about 15 minutes to hydrate. So we're gonna set it aside. Now that the yeast is in our liquid, we're gonna add our gopherm, mix it all up and give it 15 minutes to hydrate. While the yeast is hydrating, we can get started on taking our specific gravity reading. That will tell us where the sugars are to begin. And then we'll take a final gravity reading at the end to tell us how many sugars fermented out and we'll show you the formula to calculate that. We're sitting at 1.056. Now we'll give it a quick taste test, make sure it's good. Ooh, that's good. Very apple. All right, let's start adding our juice to the carboy. We'll save this last gallon to rinse out our funnel after we dump in the yeast, and we'll also give it a little bit of time for this foam to settle, so we'll check back in when our yeast is done hydrating. Our yeast has foamed up nicely and it is good to pitch. So we're gonna go ahead and throw it in now. We'll add our last gallon here, rinsing out the funnel, and we'll let this sit. Now we'll take our airlock. We've already added the sanitizing solution to that. Pop that on. We'll let this sit for two weeks and we'll see you then. It's bottling day. We know that our fermentation process has slowed way down. We are going to move this into our hydrometer so that we can take our final gravity readings. Then we'll rack into our bottling bucket, add our bottling sugars, which will be in the form of additional apple juice today. Then we'll put everything in the bottles and we'll be good to go.
Final gravity, 1.002. In order to get our ABV, we're going to calculate our starting gravity of 0 0.56, subtract our final gravity of 1.002 equals 0 0.054. We're going to multiply that by 131.25, and that gives us rounding up to a 7.1% ABV. With the help of gravity, we're going to rack this liquid into our bottling bucket with the auto siphon. All right, for five gallons, we're gonna add 32 ounces of apple juice. Pulling sugar in. Give it a gentle, but aggressive stir. <laughs> And just like that, all of this batch is in bottles. We're gonna let these condition in these bottles at room temperature for the next three weeks, and then we'll crack them open and taste them. Today's the day we've been waiting for, folks. The day we get to taste all of our efforts. <sighs> Very good. Nice, clean, crisp, refreshing. Lots of apple smells, lots of aromas. Delicious. Just a reminder, this is only one way that you can make hard cider, but it is a pretty easy way. You can swap out a lot of these ingredients uh, to make a different type or a different variation. We've got all kinds of yeasts that work. Uh, most wine yeasts, champagne yeasts, certain ale yeasts will all do uh, a really good job. The only thing you want to make sure is that you have a more complex apple juice. Some of the store-bought stuff that you can get for like $2 a gallon really doesn't have a lot of flavor at the end. We've tried. It really just tastes like alcoholic water, kind of, almost. Uh, but this is a really good variation, and we really suggest you trying it out. If you have any questions, make sure to leave us a comment down below. We'd be happy to answer them. Uh, in the meantime, we'll see you next week. And remember, always follow your dreams.